to IMPC and to make those toilet for you guys. In today's tutorial, we're talking about action listeners. So, um, if you um, look at our pre my previous tutorial, we we learned how to create a basic swing application, and we create a button. But if you click the button, nothing nothing really happens. So, really, that's a question of if the button gets clicked and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? So, the the way we can um, this is where action listeners come in. What you would do is you attach an action listener to to, to the button and it'll listen in on the actions of the button. So whenever the action listener uses the button, it'll trigger a, a method called action performed. And then in action performed, we, we can say what we want the program to do when the button gets pressed. So that's the basic idea behind action listeners. So without any further ado, let's get into the tutorial. Alright, let's get started with the tutorial. In this tutorial, um, first off, we're going to have uh, first off, I've already created our class and our static method, and I'm going to need to import a few things. To start off, we're going to just make a basic swing application, so I'm going to import a few swing components in order to do that. So, Java x.swing, jframe, import Java x.swing, jbutton, import Java x.swing, jpanel, import Java x dot swing dot j label. All right, these should at the very least look vaguely familiar to you, because this is what I talked about in the previous tutorial. Um, if you don't understand these, then you might need to go back or practice, or at least take a look at the source code from the previous tutorial and and look how I use them. So I'm gonna st start making them just a, just a window. So first off, I need to make a new instance of action listeners. List and errors. That's to make it non-static, which is a confusing concept, but if um, you don't understand it, just bear with me. And so, and now we'll, that'll trigger our constructor method. So let's go ahead and make a constructor method. It's public action listeners. Now I'm going to call the super, the, um, I'm going to call the constructor method of our parent, which by the way is jframe, so we need to Make our parent JFrame type now extends JFrame right up there. So the construct method of our parent is the title of the window, and we're going to call the title action listener tutorial. All right. Moving on. Next thing I'm going to do is set the default close operation. Exit on close. That's something else I talked about last tutorial. Set uh, location. Relative to no, just a big list of things I need to go through every single time, basically. Sizable, resizable, false, and then um, we want to pack it because we're going to add components up here, and then we're going to have pack it to the size of the stuff that we add, <coughs> and then set visible after everything is said and done. And make it true. All right. Okay. So um, now I've got the the framework set up. So the um, what we're gonna do in this tutorial is we're gonna have create a label and a button. And when we press the button, we want to change the text of the label. Um, and in order to do this, we need to have an action listener to monitor the label and all that kind of stuff. So um, in order to um, monitor the button, we're, we'll, we'll need to use action listener. So we're gonna import two more classes. First one is import java.awt.actionListener. And then we'll import java.awt.actionEvent. Oh, so these are both necessary for what we're going to do. So actionListener is what we call interface. I talked about that a few tutorials ago. So we're going to implement the interface. Implement action nope action list error all right so now i've implemented that that means that we have to every every time i implement a uh, an interface we have to make use of all the methods that the interface has so the the methods that action listener has is public void action performed be careful they spell that exactly right because it has to be a lowercase a uppercase p and as it's um argument. We'll type down action event and we're gonna call it EVT. 
we got the body right here. So that's why I had to import action event because it's used as an argument in, in this method. Okay, so now I'll just create our button and, and our label and that kind of stuff. And we'll start out with um, J panel. So J panel pane equals new J panel and nothing in the constructor. J button but B equals new J button and the constructor will type in what we want, what we want to put down have drawn on the button so we'll say press me there you go so press the button and X is J label and this will tell us whether we've pressed the button or not so in the constructor let's wait a second there we go in the constructor we're gonna type down you have an have haven't I think I spelled that right I'm not sure uh, pressed the button yet. There. Um, alright. Then we'll go ahead and add these all to our class. So, first off, we'll do pain.add and we'll add our add B, our button, to our pain. Then do pain.add L, our label, to our pain. And then we'll go ahead and add the pain to our frame. So, <clears throat> The idea is that whenever something happens, it'll perform this action perform button. But that goes back to what we were talking about in the, though I briefly talked about in the abstract concepts. So, the um, question is, if something, if something makes sound and no one's around to hear it, you know, if something happens and no one's around to hear it, does it make a sound? Well, in our case, we got we're gonna make sure that someone's around to hear it, so that we that way we know whether it made a sound or not. So. Pain not add B, or sorry, B. We want to mo um, have someone listening to it so that we know when it makes a sound or when it's clicked. So the way we do that is a method called add action listener. And um, action listener, it'll add something to listen in on the on the button so that we know when it's clicked. So the what we want to listen in on is this this object because we want the method this method inside this object to be um, triggered whenever the sound's made. If we put a different object in here, it would um, trigger the action performed method from that object. So we just added our, our class as the action listener to the button object so that we will listen to whenever something happens. So whenever we click it, it'll trigger this method. First thing, the, so it, that will pass on an action event o over to this method. And we want to. If, this isn't. This is kind of useless for this toy. But if we have a lot of things that that can be triggered by that, that can trigger the action board method. We want to make sure we know what's triggering it, so we know how to properly react to it. So in order to find what's triggering triggering to it, we'll do event dot get source. This will give us. Or, oh, sorry. Uh, we'll say e equals okay. Or obj object okay. So the object, the object obj object that triggered this is equal to the source of the event. Make sense? Good. And then if obj is equal to our b, our button, then we want to do whatever it is we're going to do. Uh, again, this is kind of unnecessary for this code since there's only one thing, listening, one thing that we're listening in on, but if we had multiple things that we're listening, that we're listening in on, which is going to be almost always be the case, then we're going to want to uh, then we're going to want to ha have this so we can check for it, react different things differently. So, in here, we're going to change the text of J label up, up here. We're going to change that to you press the button because we press the button and uh, that statement would, needs to represent whether you press the button or not. So, the way we're going to do that is to call L dot set text. That's a method inside the label. Uh, um, class that we can take advantage of here to change the text of there, and we shall change it to um, you pressed the button. All right. So that's all there is to it. I'll just go ahead and save it. I will compile it. Action listeners. Not Java. Fingers crossed. No errors. Ha 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 ha. That's. That's kind of funny. Let's see. First thing I do when I get errors like that is I check whether I did all my brackets right. And it looks
looks like I did do them all right. All right, let's look at the first error. Public action listeners. Oh, I made the same mistake last time. You see, even though there's, um, so the constructors don't take any methods, but you still need to put these parentheses to show that it's a method. Or sorry, the constructors don't take any arguments, but you still need to put these parentheses to show that it's a method. So sometimes, it took me a little, I had to look over a few times before I noticed it. It's actually the same thing happened when I was designing this tutorial, so it's a little bit embarrassing, but oh well. Let's see the errors we have now. Only six, so it went from 27 down to six. Um, I, when I, when I imported the, these two objects, I imported them wrong. It's actually under awt.event. So awt.event. I never think I did wrong. And compile again. One error. Is that resizable? I made a typo with resizable. Resizable. How do I spell that? I have to take that E out. Now the E's gone. Save it again. Compile it again. There you go. No errors. Um, rule number one. Number, number, uh, one of the major things you need to um, know when you're programming is to never panic when you see errors, because you'll see errors every time. It's very rare to get the code perfectly right on the first time. So just be prepared to look through them and try and figure out every single one of them. As you saw, I just kept getting errors just now and managed to figure it out. So that's, that's a good programming skill to have, to, to look through the errors and figure out what, the, what exactly is going wrong. So now let's try and compile it and hopefully we won't get any more errors. Here's our window. It says press me, and said you haven't pressed the button yet, which makes sense. I press it, changes to you press the button. So that's how action listeners work. We, since, we, since we add a listener to the button, um, our our cloud is able to listen in, into our button. And let's see. <clears throat> so since we added the action listener down here, we we're able to listen in on, on this button. And then when we pressed it, it triggered this method right here, which first checked whether it's actually the button that pressed it, which we did. And then, since it, since it was, it set the text to you press the button. Perfect, right? All right. So that's all for this tutorial. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something, and I look forward to seeing you guys next tutorial, which is, by the way, is the last tutorial in our series. So you've come a long way. Thank you for following this sort of tutorial series. Um, and here's the challenge if you um, if you're interested. For today's tutorial, um, create, create a uh, program with, with two buttons like so, and make it so where you click one, it'll tell you which one you clicked. So in this case, I press the one on the left, it'll tell me you press the one on the left, or press the one on the right. It'll tell you you press the one on the right. Notice that the size of the window gets modified depending on which one I press. That's also part of the challenge. Alright, that, um, that's all for this video, and here, here's the outro. You've just watched this for tutorial. If you found it helpful, please like the video and leave a comment. This helps out my channel. If you found the challenge helpful, you can find more of them at my website, www.sinforge.co. You can also find my games and my other tutorials there. With that said, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.